You're listening to Potty Mouth Radio, the home of movies, music, television, and comedy. The following podcast contains spoilers and rude words. We watch a thing. We watch a thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to We Watched a Thing. We're here talking about my most anticipated film of the year. Probably the best film of the year, I bet. Uh, let's let's do this then. How you doing, Dave? I'm, I've been looking forward to this one. <laughs> okay. Not as much as you, obviously. As you said, this was your most anticipated film of 2024. I was super keen on this. I love monster movies, which I, I think... I mean, I can tell you right now, we're going to talk about a little bit next week when we do our uh, our guilty pleasure horror movies. I've got several mm. monster movies in there. I love them. I love kaiju movies. I love Godzilla. Well, um, there was no shortage of monsters and kaiju in this film. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So I was fully expecting this to be fucking amazing. And to be fair, look, I'm not going to say yet what I did think about it. But uh, reviews have been extremely, extremely positive. Even Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, you'd expect this to be kind of low 20s. This is hovering around 50% on both. Audience scores have been up around the 90s. It's got an A- minus on the on the A plus to F scale from audience scores. So give it, give it a couple of days. A lot of those reviews would have come out on the 1st of April. <laughs> well, I think that tells us what you think about it. Let's get into it then. No, no, got- no I, I have... <laughs> Give nothing away about what I thought of this film. Godzilla Times Kong, The New Empire, is a 2024 American monster film directed by Adam Wingard, produced by Legendary Pictures, of course. It's a sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong and the fifth film in the MonsterVerse franchise. It's also, funnily enough, the 38th film in the Godzilla franchise and the 13th film in the King Kong franchise. It stars Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Dan Stevens, Kaylee Hoddle, Ele- Alex Ferns, and Fala Chen. And what is it about, Dave? Big monkey and big lizard have a fight, and then they make up and kiss, and there's <laughs> fucking a bunch of other monkeys in the Hollow Earth and um, other things. Um, Diddy Kong shows up for a bit. Um, yeah, well, that's the other thing. Yeah. I love Donkey Kong as well. It's it's all yeah. there. All all it's, the maps it's, are there. It's, it's, it's everything. It's Rampage. It's Donkey Kong. It's everything. <laughs> Let's. Um, I don't even know where to start with this film. Look, I'm just. I'm going to say it off the bat. This, and I said it in a group chat to you and a couple of other people, um, I was a little bit drunk, this is the most disappointed I've been in a cinema since I saw Scott Pilgrim vs. The World in 2010. <laughs> I can't believe you would lump that film in with this. That's a, that's a bigger piece of shit than this is. I, oh, I, I will no. you, never you, understand. You shut your I will out. never understand the love for that <laughs> film. I'm, I'm a, the problem with that is the same as this. It was a matter of expectations. I was there opening day for that film because I loved the book series. And the film just completely missed the heart, I felt. And I had a but it's simil- a well made, well acted film. I it disagree. Just isn't, it isn't true to this. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> I, I get that it may not be true to the source material, but everything else about it is very good. It's it's made by a good filmmaker. Whereas this film, exactly the same thing. I went in with probably way too high expectations. I'm one of the few people who really loved Godzilla vs Kong. I've liked all the movies in this franchise, and so I was I was super keen, and I really disliked this movie. I was very, very, very disappointed. Did you dislike it as much as it sounds like I did or did you like it a little it, more? I mean, it, it, look, I've got to allow for recency bias. So I'm, I'm unsure of how to rate this because it is so fresh, but this might be the worst film I've ever seen. <laughs> no, can't be. It could well be. This the, this film... I, I didn't think anything could be worse than Godzilla versus. I don't know you liked it. I thought Godzilla, <laughs> Godzilla versus Kong and Moonfall are in a rarefied, like S tier. Treat the audience like a fucking moron, stupid film level. It, it, not many things reach that that tier in terms yeah. of just how how moronic the script, the, the writing is, and how little the writers care about the intelligence of the audience and whether their shit makes sense. They just they they patently don't give a shit i didn't think anything could top those two this film is dumber than those two combined oh look see i'll the only thing i'll 
the only way I'll defend this film is by saying <laughs> I I don't think you can say that this has as bad a script or as bad a story because this virtually has neither of those things. I this mean, is, this is two films in one. You've got two entirely separate films that ham-fistedly get smashed together at the end like a child with fucking <laughs> Tonka toys banging them together. It's scripts. Bang, I mean, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> so a lot a lot of the rave reviews I've I've seen, which is mostly from people like me, it's mostly kaiju fans and monster movie fans, which is what shocks me that I didn't like this film. Most of the See, big I, reviews uh, are that the monster action is great and that, you know, m- Legendary had this perceived problem, right? When the first Godzilla film came out uh, in 2014 in this franchise and Godzilla had, I think from memory about 14 minutes of screen time and <laughs> people got real shitty. They were like, stop giving us this shitty is, this human is the stories. One with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Yes. Yeah. Playing. Yeah. Spouse. Were they, were they married in that one? Or, as uh, opposed to one of those, I think so. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So, you know, there was this perceived problem that they had too many human characters, that the storyline of the humans was garbage. Just give us more monsters. And so progressively that's what they've done. Which is, and I know you would agree with me. That is the antithesis of what this fucking franchise is supposed to be. This well, I mean, when you look, I mean, to be about the humans and the giant monsters are in the background. I mean, I mean, it's it's Correct like me if I'm wrong. there's been a huge there's been a huge mix of both throughout the years. I mean, you look at obviously Godzilla minus one last year, the best monster movie of all time, and probably I mean easily for me one of the best movies of last year. That is very much a human story, and Godzilla mm. is kind of to the side and he's affecting the humans. I mean, even with the Toho films and stuff, we've had plenty of this kind of film where it's just monsters running amok fighting each other. And and I love those movies as well. And so when I read that this movie was going to have over an hour of monster screen time, in fact, the words I read were that it was an hour long monster battle sequence with, you know, virtually no humans during that time, which we do kind of pretty much get in this film. I, I, I was excited. Surprise, surprise. It's fucking boring. <laughs> well, that's my problem with it. That's exactly my problem with it, is that had that been executed well, had it just for me anyway, look, I, I don't know how other people would have responded to it. My problem is that this film takes itself too seriously. If it wanted to do that, I would have loved for it to just go deep into like, you know, shower era Godzilla, where it's just complete, you know, guys in costumes battling and just complete is, ridiculousness no and over the top. At this stage of this franchise that you can have someone take it seriously because the, but it does, this film it, takes itself it, seriously, oh, oh, way too it, seriously. But, it, but it, it fails on a monumental scale because you, ha- th- this film has, prog- or this franchise has progressed to a point where it's impossible to take it seriously. Yeah. There is too much ridiculousness in the world building. Yeah, yeah. The science. Oh, no, don't, don't I, go I, there. I, I know your problems with Hollow Earth. Science. I know your problems with Hollow Earth. Oh, well, Fuck I'm off, I like the Hollow Earth. <laughs> How have we gone in the space of three year, three or four years of in-world time from being current world, normal human society with giant monsters, which is what it fucking should be, Yeah. to being... They, they have fucking... St- not, not even aliens level. Te- they have Star Trek level tech in yeah. this fucking film. They have spaceships operating yeah. through God knows yeah. what fucking magic. All I that mean, would be fine for Iron me Man if it was fun. <laughs> fucking nanotech Dude, technology that here's the fucking thing. rearranges and builds itself. If this movie was fun, all of that would work for me. You put a power glove on fucking King Kong, that should be the most fun shit ever. And this film is just dull. It's just boring. I Like, regardless of the human stuff, sure, I don't give a shit about any of them. And to me, that is the worst part of the film. The monster fight tries to get there. My biggest problem is it's honestly... A really good cast. My biggest problem is the visual effects. This movie looks oh, like a PS3 oh. game. And, and it can't do that when it is relying on so many visual effects. Like I said, this movie yeah. has over an hour of monster screen time. Yeah. Maybe make it 15 minutes of monster action and make it look good. Or just, like I said, go full on cheese. Just, if, like, Don't go that middle ground where it looks like a PS3 game. Either mm-hmm. make it really kind of over the top cartoony. Or, like honestly, if this had been done in anime style even... Give us a fuck. I'm I'm not even joking. Give us a legendary monster verse film that takes a page out of Spider Verse's book, and just go full on like fucking 
uh, like, you know, One Piece style with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I would be there in a heartbeat and that would be fun. It, 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 you either need to have a really good sense of humour and that doesn't give you a pass on writing. The writing still needs to be good, which this is patently not. But it needs yeah. to either be tongue-in-cheek and have a sense of humour or it needs to be a serious... To take the the premise of these giant things serious, and that and that that ship has sailed three movies ago. Yeah. yeah. If they wanted to do that, they needed to do it back when. Uh, I mean, the Gareth Edwards one wasn't great, but I did good. like Godzilla. I liked <laughs> Godzilla King of Monsters. I, I I genuinely liked Kong Skull Island. Nailed it. That is the best in this franchise, as far as I'm concerned. The effects look good. The acting was good. The writing was good for the tone that it was going for, and it hit the tone it was going for. Yeah, and that's what everything else has missed. None of the others have had the sense of humor that 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 was the Thor Ragnarok of this franchise that struck the balance between having mo- sort of moments that had some pathos and stuff. It wasn't all just shits yeah. and giggles. Yeah, but it it had enough funny lines. It had enough quirky characters, and and the, the focus was on the human characters. Yeah. So yeah. you actually gave a shit. They were each clearly defined. They had in relationships between themselves. Even Sam Jackson, when he was chewing scenery, was had a place and he had a relationship with his men. Yeah. And that film weirdly gets maligned as, as a piece of shit. And I think it's by far, it's a genuinely good film. And probably the only unequivocally genuinely good film for me in this franchise, even yeah. though I do like, King of Monsters. I mean, well, not. let's you you kind of just brought up the the human story. Let's talk about that. Um, it is a very small Excuse part of this film. Me. To be how honest. do you have Rebecca Hall, Dan Stevens, Brian, uh, what's his name, Brian Tyree Brian, Henry? Oh, I mean Brian Tyree Henry. Like fuck him off, please. Yeah. Fuck him I, off. I, I, oh no no no! I, I, I'm not talking about the characters in the writing, but these are genuinely really good performers. Yeah, yeah. Who act well. And who, I mean, who else? I mean, you didn't have Millie Bobby Brown. Apparently, she's no longer important, even though she was the fucking star of. Well, I think film. she's. I think she's too expensive. <clears throat> this is a very, very pared down cast. This cast. I mean, uh, well, what, yeah, you're talking. Scar- Alexander Skarsgård's apparently still too expensive because he, we've got Rebecca Hall back, who apparently doesn't charge as much, and yeah. for no reason. He is noticeably absent, even yeah. though the two of them are hand in hand. You, how do you have one and not the other? Well, yeah, I mean, and this, not this even film, have a mention of him. No, well, this film literally has what, like, six or seven human cast members. Um, Rebecca Hall is the biggest name, and she's not. She's not a massive draw no. card. I mean, um, she's a she's an amazing actress, and yeah. I love her, and she looks fucking so hot in this. With her hair, but... <laughs> Oh look, I can be shallow. This whole movie's shallow. So I think it came. I think it came down to cost. But he's fucking awful in this, playing the weird Uh, cross between fucking Ace Ventura and Jack Black. Yeah. Oh, I mean, again, that that is a character that is so outrageous it should be fun, and it's just not. Like this is literally a a vet for King Kong. (laughs) It's how tone deaf this screen is. Screen the, the the script is and the screenwriters they they have this character. That they've even dressed like Ace Ventura. Yeah, and he basically is is Ace Ventura, but they they name check Ace Ventura in the film. Yeah, it's like if you're blatantly ripping off another character, don't <laughs> reference it in the fucking screenplay. See, but here's the thing: Ace Ventura was a comedy film. This film yeah. doesn't have a single laugh in it. <laughs> no, but Dan Stevens is meant to be very funny. Oh, He's really? Hippy, dippy, fucking. Oh. <laughs> like, I mean, let's just, we have a we have a kaiju dentist in this film. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the main characters. That's what I mean. That's so outrageous and ridiculous. That should be fun, and it's just he's, not. We we know he's never done this for Kong before. How is this his career? <laughs> what other kaiju has he fucking done dentistry on? Why does he have equipment and? Prosthetic teeth to do dentistry on Kong. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Why do we, How why did he have, have that just that? laying around? Yeah. Well, not like they've got the fucking infinity gauntlet laying around in Hollow yeah. Earth for some reason. Yeah, which can do all kinds of ridiculous shit like cure frostbite. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, the other thing that really disappointed me is the lack of Godzilla in this film. This is Kong's film. This is 100% a Kong film. And I kind of wish that it had been named so, so that I went in expecting that. You know, it's like 
Captain America Civil War, for example. It's an Avengers film. They could have called that Avengers 3. They didn't. Yeah. They put it right there on the tin. This is a Captain America film. And I wish they Should had done the same Captain thing Captain America here. X Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. And I wish that they'd done the same thing here and just given us like Kong colon something, something, something. Because this is this is a Kong movie that has a little bit of Godzilla in it. Godzilla's there. He had some fun. And it sucks because I, I honestly, you know I fucking love movie? this iteration of Godzilla. I When he sucks, he, when he goes full Kirby and sucks up that other Kaiju's powers and he's got the he, fucking he, purple he just spikes. Fucking ingests I, and he goes all fucking pride and gets his pink. I loved that. Halo. I loved that. And I wish uh, that that had been more of the film and I would have, I would have liked this so much more because they just don't really play with that at all. So, yeah. No, they should have called this movie Curious George is a movie. (laughs) It would have been a way more accurate title. (laughs) Can you tell I've been sitting on that one for half an hour? (laughs) When he, when when fucking Diddy Kong comes in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God. It's the growing pains thing. We've got baby, baby DiCaprio coming in because all the kids have gotten too old. Yeah. But then when he turns around and he's, and he's, just a little shit and he bites kong on the finger and then he just he's <laughs> that sequence i was like oh my god if you make the rest of the movie like this I, i'm not gonna yeah. hate this and, I'm, that... and i know billy didn't like it and we're gonna have the most we're gonna be in the upside down where i'm defending the what a movie from this franchise while billy shits <laughs> on it and that will be the best thing ever uh, admittedly everything else in the movie was fucking no garbage. you're 100 percent right sequence that sequence was, and when he picks when he up picks him up Diddy and uses Kong, him to battle with, yeah. Big monkey beats other big monkeys with small monkeys. It is the only fun moment that, in any of this oh kaiju battle. God, it's the amazing. only fun moment. It, yeah, when he I picks up the little monkey and he's swinging him around. Come up saying puny god. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I agree with you. That was one moment that really, that really lent into the fun of what a kaiju movie can be. Um, because this isn't going the Godzilla minus one route. This is not a serious movie. It doesn't have anything to say. So no. go the other out with it and just go fucking bananas. And the th- where it failed compared to one of the, I mean, I, I hated the last, the film before this, even not as much as this, but I, I hated it. It was terrible. But the one thing that I remember in, liking in the whole thing was I thought that the, um, Little deaf girl who had having taught him Kong to sign, and, and yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I thought that was genuinely touching yeah. that she was communicating with Kong and Kong was communicating with her through ASL. I thought that was beautiful. In this film, now she's fucking telepathic and she's from a race of telepaths who've been living in the fucking hollow earth. Well, not just and, in the hollow uh, earth, oh my god, not just in the hollow earth, in the hollow earth of in the, the hollow earth. <laughs> The hollow another earth layer. has another it's also layer. also lit by a sun that doesn't exist <laughs> and has gravity even though... Oh. I, I mean, seriously. we. I know I know this is an American film and they have trouble with evolution and gravity and things like that in their, in their educational <laughs> oh, be, system. Be careful, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it. <laughs> it's all right. I'm like, Wayne, I'm lovable. I can say shit and people still like me. Um, but gravity's a fairly... In, in a broad sense, a fairly simple concept. <laughs> the bigger a thing is, the centre of that thing attracts smaller things to it. Yeah. So Earth is attracted to the sun, so we don't go hurtling off into space. Moon is attracted to the Earth, and so it circles around us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you go into the middle of a thing, the gravity doesn't work to the crust, to, to get outwards to the crust. So if you have this hollow Dyson sphere of an Earth where we've yeah. got a world... I mean, let's... Ignore the fact that you can almost jump from one side of the hollow earth up to the ceiling side of the hollow earth. So it's a very small hollow of the earth. <laughs> but why is gravity working outwards? Look, I've heard you make all these complaints before, <laughs> Dave, and I don't get the hollow earth is the least of my problems with. I like the hollow earth. You I'm here a for the hollow earth. If you with a hollow moon, you should have a problem nah, with the hollow earth. I'm here for hollow earth. I'm here for it. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong was fucking great. That first foray to hollow earth, I'm all here for it. <laughs> uh, have you got to the Monarch TV series, by the way, yet? I still haven't yet. Can you watch that? Because I want to have a. a I want to. 
talk about that with you and how that relates to all of this. I'm very because I keen went on, to. I went down a fucking insanity rabbit hole after this film, reading up on the chronology of this entire universe and the graphic novels and the TV show and, yeah. you know, John Goodman and, and how he's played by a younger version of him in the TV show and who, who's the son and the daughter of... And they, they've tried to make this interconnected world. It's a fucking mess <laughs> and a failure, <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean look i was i was just disappointed in this film i wanted many more homages like especially after the way that the original godzilla score is utilized in godzilla minus one fuck i would have loved to have some of that come back here but we don't you know it's Godzilla very bland most of his time asleep in the coliseum <laughs> yeah yeah it's very bland it's very dry i don't think any of the film is funny i think very little of it is fun i think Again, the visual effects are just absolutely atrocious. And I, f- I, f- I always feel bad when I say that as a visual effects artist because I know the work that these guys go into to put a film like this out. And it was, I can tell you right now, that still would have been a boatload of work. They finished filming 18 months ago. So oh, it's the, a I huge production I don't think you've got film. a shot in this film that doesn't have CG in it no. somewhere. Like, and the entire film is replete with it. Yeah, but it's just such a shame that it doesn't look, good it re- nothing yeah. has weight to it nothing has no watching watching, the kong, movement. watching kong run yeah and we- weirdly uh, uh, like two hours after i got home from watching this film um i can't remember what's in ign or some someone had posted up a clip from uh not the Ang Lee, but the the MCU Hulk film. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Norton one. Yeah. Of Hulk running across rooftops and stuff. And there was a sense of impact with every land, every yeah. step, every swing. You got a sense that this guy, this thing weighed tons and as it moved. And having just come from a film where something 10 times that size was swinging and running around. Yeah. And it, it could have been a midget running on marshmallows. If yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was no sense of impact or scale or anything yeah the rendering is atrocious like i said it looks like a ps3 game the worst thing for me apart from the lack of weight to all the actions is i feel like there is a huge inconsistency with the scale throughout the film you spoke about how oh, big kong is meant to be kong changes size there are scenes in this scene film scene. where kong looks the size of a regular gorilla and then yeah. and then when he and godzilla are fighting at the pyramids I mean, even though you know that they're big because the pyramids are right there next to them, but they still somehow look really tiny. I just the think biggest, that the there's biggest a huge Kong ever, ever seemed was when he does the little finger touch thing with um, the last avatar. Um, and you've got this, his fingertip fills the screen and, and yeah. she's sort of literally touching this enormous thing. But, but half an hour earlier, He's been crashing through trees that we know are normal size because yep. the humans have just walked through them. Yeah. And he's just crashing into them and they're up to his chest. Real terrible it sense makes of scale. No it, sense. It really, really bothered me because yeah. in a kaiju film, film, you need that. You need to it's, feel it, how large it, these it creatures are. It lives and dies by the sense of scale of these things. They yeah. need to be striding through a city. Yeah. Like, um, I, I need to rewatch it. I, I remember slagging on Pacific Rim, but my memory of that is that at least that's one thing it did very, very well was the I think so. The scope. Yeah, Everything felt easy memory, but big. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I did not like this film at all. I'm a two out of ten, and for being my most anticipated Jinx. film of the year, it's my most disappointing film. I don't know if it'll make my list of worst of the year yet. I've seen oh some pretty bad God. things already, but I have yet most to disappointing see for sure. Top, this is this will top my worst of the year. Yeah, right. At, at this point in time, anyway. It, um, yeah, I was I was at one on Letterbox, so two Ooh. out of ten. I feel like that's generous. This is a horrendous, horrendous, horrendously bad film, and I would yeah. urge everyone not to waste your money going to see it. Wait till it's free, and then oh, it's 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 it's, make, it's making its money back. It's already done extraordinarily well for opening weekend. It's it's going to crack you know over a hundred mil for opening weekend. So this will do better than Dune Part Two. I'm calling that now. God, Dune Part Two has just cracked six hundred. We, we, we don't deserve to live as a species. <laughs> we, we just fucking wipe us out. Dune Part Two has just cracked two hundred. Tofa very excitedly sent a message to myself and Sam from Movie Reviews and Twenty Qs saying, "Yes, we did it. Six hundred. Um, this will get that in double the time. I'm sure of it. 
Um, uh, look, I don't, I don't think how, we're, how, we're not in billion territory, but it's it's going to beat Dune too. I'm sure of it. How how the guy who directed this and the preceding Godzilla versus Kong is the same guy that did things like The Guest and Your Next? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, those th- they were great. Feel- what happened to him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't hate Death Note, but everyone else in the world hated Death Note. I mean, this guy is on a downward trajectory like you wouldn't believe based on his last three films. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a bit, a bit, a bit <gasps> disappointing, but let's end things on a happy note because next week I know we're going to be talking about some good things, some great things, in fact, because you and I are going to be talking about I guarantee you I will be talking about 10 things that are... Oh, oh we're going so 10, are we? Best. Yeah. Don't we? We always do five. We don't always do five. We always do ten. I've got all the graphics to prove it. Nah, we've always done five. I can't do oh, unless you let me have ten honourable mentions. I can't do five. You could do There's honourable mentions. mentions. Hang on, I swear we always do five. Hang on. <laughs> Don't wear a professional outfit. Why would you listen to any other podcast? I'm gonna, I'm gonna search our feed. I'm just gonna search for the word. <laughs> Top, top five movie couples, um, top five comic book movies, top five movie modernizations. Oh, but yeah, oh, we're... tell you what though, we've mixed it up though because we did the top ten underrated horror films. We did top there. ten actors That's... we'd watch do anything. There you um, go. So we've done a mix of both. Uh, yeah, okay. Top five guilty pleasure comedies. Top five hidden gem TV shows. Ooh, top it feels five like we started Christmas doing movies fives and then we blocked out to tens because the <laughs> tens seem more recent. Can you can you can you come up with ten? Uh hang on. We're literally recording. <laughs> Let me check how many I've got. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got nine on my list. I reckon I can find a ten in five minutes. Yep. All right. Next week we'll be doing our top ten. <laughs> check that, listeners. <laughs> Guilty pleasure horror movies. Uh because you know what? Dave and I, we love horror movies, and uh, I don't know about you, Dave, but I certainly, um, as attested to from my love of Godzilla uh, vs. Kong, I tend to love movies that most other people think are bad. So that's the way I did it, because I don't have a good read on this stuff. I just go, I love this movie. I've gone by, what do I love that has a bad Rotten Tomatoes score? And that's the way that I was able to come up with what I defined as guilty pleasure horror movies. It's a weird one, isn't it? Because I, I genuinely don't believe in the concept of guilty pleasures. Um, if I like something, it's because I think it has some redeeming qualities. And even if it's your highness, I think <laughs> it's a good film or I wouldn't like it. Yep. But we'll see. We'll see you next week. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what we're getting to next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that at uh, pottymouthradio.com or pottymouthradio at gmail.com. You can find us on all the socials at pottymouthradio. Uh, you don't need to do that. Just say pottymouthradio.com. <laughs> Everything's on. I put everything on the fucking website so that I can save you this effort. Well, and definitely go to the website, people. Check out the rest of the shows on the Pottymouth Network. Uh, the one where we watch the Friends Rewatch podcast is live now, where News and I are rewatching Friends one app at a time. Uh, you That's can, a good show. Yeah, the first five eps of that out. And I'm not even on it. Uh, Dave and I, we're five eps into recording our Dungeons and Dragons podcast with some oh, other yeah. wonderful podcasters from the, around the world. So that one's not ready to go out just yet, but keep an ear out for that. Very at, soon. At Pottymouth Radio. <laughs> and we will catch you next week. Fare thee well. <laughs>